those of you who watch the channel, you know where I am. You've seen plenty of videos here. I'm gonna park over here. This is where we normally park the skid steer. It's kind of like our corner. <laughs> get out and get some of these stakes picked up. There's one way over here. It looks snow. I don't know where that came from. It's amazing where you find these things. You know, the ones that get knocked down and, you know, end up missing or. I don't know. It's not like we hit them with a plow or anything. Sometimes they just <laughs> end up out of the ground. Who knows? So this place actually contacted us about the pool too. I don't know. That thing hasn't been open in years. I have no idea who the hell put this stake up here in the woods. <laughs> I mean, who knows? This is where we put all the snow usually. Perfect example. I don't know how this one got all the way up here. said it's amazing where you find these things. <laughs> Obviously I'm not gonna film this whole process, there's a ton of them here, but just kind of showing you guys where we put them. You put them at all the corners, all that good stuff. Also this video I'm just kind of documenting that there's no damage or anything like that. <laughs> This one got hit a few times. <laughs> we put snow over on this side. Oh, there's one right here from the snow. This is where we pile the snow, so that makes sense. Another one. It's like a scavenger hunt. Making my way around. <laughs> Only got a few more left. I just got this side. So we'll get the rest of these picked up here and then we'll head over to the next one. Jeez, got a long one in here. <laughs> That should be all of them from this one. Till next time. It should be good here. Uh, we'll be back here next year, it looks like. Probably won't be back here till December. Restate, probably November actually, stake everything back out. So, like I said, we have a two year contract with this place. So, we'll be doing it again next year. And hopefully we can renew that contract to keep it going. Cause this is, uh, I like this place. It's uh keep one machine here. Uh, during the storm, you just basically keep it open. And uh, after the storm, the only part that does kind of suck when you get big storms, you're gonna move cars, but it's still not a bad process. Um, very easy, uh, very easy access. It's kind of wide open. It's not the hardest one to plow. Salting's easy too. Just go up and down the aisleways. Not a lot of shoveling, so I like it. So for those of you who haven't watched the channel for a while or new, um, go back, look at the plowing videos. You'll see this place in the winter. Uh, a lot of videos up here plowing snow. Um, our 30 inch blizzard, one of the highest uh, view videos I ever got was here <laughs> uh, when we had 30 inches of snow. So uh, let's go sit in traffic again and go uh, get some more up the street. For those of you new to the channel too, a um, little background on our snow operation. Um, we do, I don't remember. It's been so long since we plowed snow. I don't remember how many customers we have. <laughs> um, we do like six or seven commercial customers all in this general area. Everything's a mile apart from each other, literally. So, um, it was beeping. Uh, but everything's close together. Uh, we don't have to travel far at all. Um, we literally, you know, we're within a mile. So I'm not going to obviously film me driving to the next one because it's going to take me longer than it, you know, <laughs> with traffic. But um, our other one's literally two streets up. And then we have a church down here. We actually have a church right behind us uh, down the street. And then um, our storage building that we do is uh, a little bit out of the ways. That one's a little further than from the others. But everything's within five, maybe ten minutes of each other. And the reason why we do that, we have a, it's a small plowing operation. Like I said, for those of you who watch the channel, you know all about this crap. Um, but we run a really small plowing operation. Um, lately, we've been only running two trucks. Um, and that's enough to do everything we need. Two guys, me, David, and uh, sometimes a shoveler. 
uh, big storms I'll have a um, operator running the skid steer usually one of my buddies runs the skid steer for me but nice small operation um, very profitable um, so we don't uh, plan on getting any really bigger than that uh, just kind of keep it to what we can handle and you know obviously what uh, what makes sense so uh, we do a few driveways we've cut back significantly over the years uh, we used to do almost 70 or 80 of them at one point uh, we're down to like 10 to 15 <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if next year we're down to like five <laughs> um, obviously we had no snow so we barely plowed any but it's just it's there's no point you know you make way more money on uh, commercial stuff especially with the salt put it this way I made more I make more salting in a storm or two than I do plowing every drive where we got so um, doesn't make sense but yeah you just small operation profitable that's basically all you need to know uh, I have a couple videos on the channel so if you're new to the channel Go back you can watch them um, describe the whole plowing operation kind of how we do it how we uh structure things um like i said we don't rely on snow everybody thinks you know <laughs> we rely on snow for the winter we literally plow snow just to pay some extra bills um if we didn't plow snow we'd be literally be sitting around all winter doing nothing so uh, it's not made to be profitable it's just made to do something honestly and uh, to, uh, to pay some bills at the end of the day so um it's really not one of those things that we are in it to you know make millions of dollars it's just literally just uh keep us busy keep the trucks moving um and make some money to pay the bills that's about it you know break even over the winter obviously if we make a profit that's even better but you know it is what it is but anyways i'm actually pulling in the next one so that's how close they are together customer has been a customer for almost since we started plowing uh at least six years now so one of our original customers uh, awesome guy never complains pays literally send the bill we have a check actually both customers um the guy next door too um so the guy who owns this used to actually own the building next door we used to plow for them he sold that building to the guy who owns both buildings over there confusing i'll show you in a second what i'm talking about but um both these customers literally pay you send in the bill you get a check within a week week and a half so can't complain at all um pretty much all of our snow customers pay on time there's a few that are a little late but they always they do end up paying so <laughs> just like everything you know you have so you have to wait sometimes we had a couple of customers last year and if you guys are you know <laughs> been on the channel for a while you may have seen there's a few of them we're not plowing anymore there's a reason for that um a couple of them one actually never paid me for the last month that we did last year and um that one also was chronically late on paying uh significantly late like 90 days late <laughs> and then uh just kind of basically you know then that parking lot sucked too i'm not gonna <laughs> tell you which one it is you can figure it out um but the reason why we don't usually get rid of a customer is is, is they don't pay or you know there's issues with them so we've had two in the past couple of years that um we've kind of had a fight with and a couple that didn't pay their bills on time and two of them actually didn't pay a few months so but that's the nature of the business. You're gonna you're gonna deal with that crap. But anyway, so let me go get these stakes real quick. Uh, I'm gonna do all three buildings here, and then um, I'll probably be it for today. I'll grab the other ones at the other places another day. All right, let's get started. So this is new. They have a concrete pad now for the dumpster. This was never there. It's all brand new. Ooh, looks like I hit this one. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not going to show me picking up every stake. Uh, you get the point. You know, there's a bunch of them with this one, too. Um, I'll show you guys the building next door in a second. All right. That is all from this parking lot. Now I'm going to go to the store. So that's all this one. Shouldn't be too many over here, but... So basically, we do this building here, building next door over here this building and then we do the one next to this as well a little bit of shoveling at this one in the back here so it's nice you know we'll plow this one whoever's shoveling just stays out of the truck comes right over here shovels this we go over we plow this one and then we do the, the other brick building over there we do three in a row and then we also do that house right there and then one of the other churches that we do is about 45 seconds down the street. So they're all real close. This one's easy, it's not a big parking lot. This is actually all new, obviously, you can see it. Obviously also recording this for documentation purposes, so you can see there's no damage. 
it is new and I don't want to be blamed for hitting the curbing or anything like that. So I'm just going to record this whole thing. If I need it, I got it. It's always good to document everything. There's obviously no damage here at all. This is, we haven't touched the curbs. So this one's not bad, it's a couple passes. Uh, they actually widen this quite a bit. This used to be where that white car is. That used to be the end of the parking lot. So they added onto it quite a bit. Uh, not a lot of shoveling though, except for the back. I'll get those on my way out. And then we do this, the little apartments over here that kind of suck to be honest. But basically we gotta keep them open during the storm. All the snow goes right where that car is parked in the corner right there. And there's always a car parked there during the storm. So there's really nowhere to put the snow. That post over there, it's bent over. Uh, the, we didn't do that, but that's where the snow's been going. Running out of room on my hand here. So, basically all the snow's been going over there. And then we have the owner of these buildings comes, he moves all these cars out, and we, uh, we open it up. So it's a little bit of a pain, but it only takes us probably 45 minutes to get this place all done quick salt, barely use any salt, so not bad, and then they, like I said, they pay right on time, so you can't complain at all, but I gotta put the camera down, I need my other hand, I'm running out of room, so we'll uh, get these pulled and go to the next one. So one thing I am thinking, if we end up getting the one I'm on, these these two here back next year, uh, I might bring the skid steer up here, and uh, do all three of these with the skid steer, uh, I think that's gonna be the best way to do it. Um, I don't know, we'll see. So I always got the Bobcat that I really don't use, but we could do all three of these, this one, this one, and that one. With a machine, it'd be a lot faster. And then we could always bring it down to the apartments if we need it. So. All right, so that's all of them. So hopefully we get that building, hopefully we get this building, and hopefully we get that building over there and back next year. Uh, would be nice. Um, obviously we'll send the contracts out over the summer months and uh, we'll see what they say. So this should be the bulk of them. We still got some at our church, but we'll grab that another day. That's gonna be it for today here. I'm uh, I got two more places I gotta pull stakes, but I'm not gonna bother to do them today. So, like I said, from the front, we do this one, this one, this one, and then I'm not gonna drive down there, but we do the church down the street, which you probably can see the steeple if you look really hard. See that steeple down there? Kind of going fast. We do that church. So everything's really, really close together, um, especially these ones. These ones, you can throw a rock to each one, which is awesome. So hopefully we get them back. A lot of them are all we've had for years. You know, um, we try to be fair with our customers, fair with our pricing, do a good job. It's what, you know, has worked. So we'll uh, obviously reach out over the summer and uh, hopefully get those contracts signed again and uh, keep them going for another year or two. Um, I'm going to... The storage building we do, I'm not gonna bother going up there today. It's a little out of the way and I gotta, I gotta get going doing all this stuff. So there's literally like maybe six stakes there. That parking lot's tiny. And then the other church that we do, my family's church, uh, we usually actually put the stakes in the church. Um, they keep them there. So um, I'm just gonna leave them for now. Um, I don't have a key to the church. Uh, actually, David does, I think. So I'll probably have him pull those stakes and put them in there one of these days. Uh, if not, they'll do it themselves. So it's not a big deal. Uh, there's really not a lot of stakes there either. I, uh, I've been going to that church my whole life, so I know that parking lot like the back of my hand. So we just got a few where, you know, a couple of corners are. But so that's it with the snow stakes. A little quick tour of the properties that we do if you're new to the channel. Um, obviously, if you want to see more of the snow plowing stuff, there's a playlist from all the snow stuff. Not that we had a big winter this year, but there's a 2023 24 winter, you know, snow videos. There's one from last year. Every winter we should have, there's a playlist down on the channel. So if you want to check out videos from the past years, you'll see all these places, you know, I'm talking about, you know, when we're plowing. So a lot of Maria Curry customers, but I'm going to head back to the shop now, get these stakes put away, and I'll show you kind of our plans for the snow equipment there. 
back here at the shop. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. I'm gonna take a handful of these. I'll show you where I'm gonna put them. I've actually had these snow stakes for like four years now. So I have to replace some next year, but they still work. Uh, basically what I do, if you watched the last video, we have uh, put these spreaders away. Um, I put these stakes inside the spreader so they don't go missing over the summer months. I keep saying almost winter. <laughs> so we got our snow shovels in here, the spinner in here, the straps for this is in here. Uh, the boss is under here. Same thing, that's got the spinner, it's got the straps, all that stuff is in there so that way you don't go missing. Um, if you watched the last video, you saw what we were doing. We also dielectric greased the connections on this one, greased up everything, same with that one. Um, we got the snow bucket back here. Never used this year. We have our salt bucket that we never used this year. <laughs> A lot of this stuff didn't get used. You see the trend? Uh, that's our, I've talked about it a bunch of times on the channel. That's our like mini salt bucket. It, it fits perfect for loading that uh, boss. And then obviously our big snow bucket that we hardly ever use. I've contemplated selling that bucket. I mean, we've used it maybe five times ever, but the five times we used it, it was phenomenal. It was awesome. <laughs> it made snow removal so much easier, especially a couple years ago we had that 30 inch blizzard. Uh, we went out for a full day and moved so much snow with it. So it is worth it. Um, I used it actually a lot last year when I was uh, getting prepped for my wedding, uh, doing like mulch and uh, wood chips. So it is good. Uh, I'm not going to get rid of it, obviously, but uh, it just doesn't get used a lot. <laughs> and then we got our plows. We're still going to put them away. Um, they just dropped for now. So um, I talked about it a little bit on the last video, but uh, eventually I think what we're going to end up doing this year, uh, we'll put the plows on pallets. That way we can easily move them. And I think we're gonna do a plow here, a plow there, and then one on the other container on the roofs. And I'll probably put the push box up there, honestly. I was gonna leave it on the ground, but that way everything's out of the way. Spreaders will be up here out of the way, and then all the plows will be on the roof. Uh, the push box is over there. Um, I think that's gonna be our best plan, just get everything up and out of the way. And that way we have space. We'll have all the space here. Uh, we gotta clean this area up a little bit. We'll have all the space over there. Um, so plenty of room to work with. At least that's a game plan right now, I think. I'm not really 100% sure what we're going to do, um, but I think that's kind of what we're leaning towards. Um, it's a new shop, obviously. Um, you know, it's the theme. It's, I'm talking a lot of new-to-the-channel people here, but um, we moved our shop last year. If you guys have watched the channel for a while, you, you know. Um, so we're still kind of working on our final setup for the new shop here, um, how we want to figure things for the summer. But I think that's gonna be the plan. Snow stuff over here, a couple things on the roof. And then uh, this area, we gotta figure out. I think we're also with the pushers over there. I think we're gonna uh, get a couple uh, piles of bulk material. Not sure yet, but uh, we're obviously not gonna like, set up bins or anything like that. But we do a lot of pool liners, obviously. And we need uh, a lot of sand a lot of times and a uh, bluestone for underneath them. So I think we're gonna get probably uh, a couple yards of each just to have on hand. Uh, that way when we do liners will happen so and then uh this will be open here this whole area got the skid steer um got to clean out a little more i guess if i would i gotta get rid of um organized so that's all gonna come uh we had a lot of organizing to do um <laughs> uh, obviously the start of the season we're trying to work things out we still got deliveries coming in um but we are you know obviously starting work and getting jobs done so but uh, just want to make a quick video kind of wrapping up winter that's kind of a little bit of video here um for the lack thereof uh there really wasn't a winter so <laughs> it is what it is i mean the last couple of winters have been getting worse and worse and worse last year was just a joke um <laughs> we had we technically had 12 inches of snow this year which was technically more than last year <laughs> believe it or not Last winter, the winter before, we, uh, I think we had like nine inches or something like that, so it's still a joke. Um, a normal winter, which, if they even exist anymore, we used to get like 40 to 50 inches of snow. We used to have normal winters, believe it or not, you know, where we'd actually go out. Uh, in average winter, years ago, we would plow or, or push snow at least eight to ten times. Uh, we usually have a mix between, you know, small storms and a few big ones. And uh, like I said, we'd push eight to ten times. Uh, an average winter, too, we would also salt um, anywhere from 18 to 20 times. 
And that was almost, you know, every winter. Even last year. Last year was real bad with the snow department. Uh, we only plowed twice. <laughs> uh, like I said, nine inches of snow. But we salted a lot. We salted like 16 times. So we made up for everything with the salt. Uh, this year, we didn't get either. Um, we had technically more snow. We pushed... I want to say three times. Um, I don't know. It wasn't much, but we, we pushed like three times. And we only salted eight times. I keep track of all this stuff. Um, I don't know if I ever showed it on the channel, but I have a spreadsheet. Um, I track the storm, storm date, how much snow we had, and how much salt we used. That way I can look back every year and see how much salt we used every year. Uh, average year, we 16. To, last year was 16. The year before, I think it was 18. The year before that was 20. So 16 to 20 is what we usually do for saltings. Uh, we usually use, you know... 25 to 30 yards of salt uh, this year we did eight times and god we only i don't even know if we used 10 yards of salt um <laughs> which whatever you know we uh it paid itself off you know we got a truckload at the end of the year and obviously first storm that was paid off but uh now since then if you watch the last couple of videos just our pile's huge over there uh, we got a lot of salt for free so i'm not complaining there but um it is what it is i mean just winters they don't exist but um i don't know where i'm going with this that's the end of the day and i'm tired <laughs> but anyways just i don't know we'll hope for better luck next year um we're gonna try pushing more seasonal contracts next year um just see what happens there of course the year we're probably gonna try that it's gonna snow like crazy so <laughs> we'll see but um we'll see what happens um we're gonna rebid all the contracts obviously we should should be able to get them all back We've been getting them every single year, so um, the customers like us. We do a good job, and we're very fair with our prices. So uh, I don't think we'll be upgrading any equipment. Um, that was one thing I mentioned last year um, about maybe upgrading some of these plows and stuff. No point. <laughs> Even at the beginning of last winter in the fall, I was talking about getting a new pusher or plow for the skids here. Not happening. Um, I'm not spending a dime on snow equipment uh, until we actually start getting good winters. Um, everything's paid off. All this stuff, you know, all these plows here. Nothing here owes me a dime. Uh, everything's been paid off for many winters now. So um, basically the only expenses during snow season is that first initial load of salt, which we have plenty of it that we just got for free. <laughs> so there'll be no expenses, literally. Obviously insurance, labor, and gas. But equipment-wise, there'll be no massive expenses next year. So I think that's kind of the mentality we're going to have next year. Because if we get another bad winter, at least we don't have a high overhead, you know. Um, whatever money we make is just going to pay for expenses over the winter months. Um, and don't get me wrong, we had a horrible winter this year, but we still broke even. You know, we didn't lose any money at all. Um, if we didn't plow snow, you know, that's one thing. We'd have no income at all over the winter. And uh, the way we work, basically, is we stash all of our money away in the fall as much as possible. During pool cl closing season, we go, we go hard. <laughs> uh, we do three to 400 pool closings a year, which is a lot for our small crew. But a lot of that money we put right aside and try not to touch it. Um, and we usually get through the winter. Even like with this winter, we had a horrible year. We were able to pay the bills, get through. Yeah, it was definitely a little bit tighter this year. Um, these stock up orders that we just got in the last couple of videos stung a little bit more. <laughs> but, you know, we're still here. We're still uh, we're still afloat. You know, we're not going out of business. Just obviously a little tougher, you know. Um, to put it in perspective, not to talk numbers, but the amount of money I owe in taxes... And like our estimated tax payments in April is basically all the money we made all winter, <laughs> which is it's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money at the end of the day. So um, it is what it is. So it's kind of why, you know, I want to keep a small operation, too, because, you know, these big guys buying and now I'm going on a rant, but whatever. <laughs> um, one thing I can't stand is you, you watch all these people that plow snow and, you, you know, I'm sure everybody knows what I'm talking about here. They're always buying new equipment. They always have brand new loaders. They always have metal plus plows. They always have, you know, all the fancy crap. I mean, that's great. It really is. If, you know, if you have seasonal contracts and that stuff's getting paid for and you get good deals, great. If it's making the money, great. But I think it paints the wrong picture for a lot of small, like, you know, especially the younger generation where you think you need the newest and the greatest and the best thing to make money. And you absolutely do not, especially in snow plowing. You know, you can make money with this straight blade plow behind me. This plow is probably $4,000 brand new. You can buy a used one of these for half that price. Um, that spread right there, I bought used for 1500 bucks. In one storm, I make that money three times over, you know? So you can make a ton of money 
in snow plowing if, if you do it right. Um, and you don't need the fancy crap. You really don't. You don't need a V plow. It is nice. It makes things a little more efficient, you know, but at the end of the day, you can go out and buy these $150 wings for this plow here, and it does very similar, similar things, you know. You might have to make one or two more extra passes, whatever. It is what it is. Um, for my area, a lot of people, all the comment worries, I'm always getting negative feedback about, you know, my trucks, my plows, my operation. At the end of the day, I live in southeastern Massachusetts where it hardly ever snows. So there is no point in me going out and spending thousands and thousands of dollars on all this fancy stuff. Put it this way, if I bought, <laughs> I would never do it, but if I bought a Metal Plus plow to put on my skid steer, I wouldn't have even made enough money this year probably to pay for the damn thing. I mean, we, we would have made money, obviously, but, you know, most of the bills for that winter would have went for paying that, that stupid plow off, which to me does not make any sense. Yeah, if we get, you know, 20 snowstorms and we have tons of seasonal contracts and the money is there, makes sense. But to me, it doesn't when you can spend 1500 bucks on this thing over here, one storm, make that money back three times over, and you make a profit all year. So that's my mentality on snow. I explain myself many times on this channel. Um, we're not a big snow plowing company at all. Um, but I know it, it's tough because a lot of people came to this channel because of the snow plowing content. Um, at the end of the day, we are an extremely small business. We're a seasonal business. At the end of the day, we're a swimming pool company and we do snow plowing in the winter and we use that winter income for extra money. Uh, we don't rely on it. We don't bank on it at all. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, whatever. It is what it is. Um, so I'm kind of addressing all the haters right now in the comments. I get on every video, no matter what. Uh, people saying we don't know how to plow, we don't have the good equipment, straight blade plows are junk, gas trucks are junk. <laughs> you know, all my stuff's gas, I have no diesel. Just, it is what it is. I, at the end of the day, we make money, and at the end of the day, where I am in the southern New England, and there's hardly any of the snow. So it's just to pay some bills. That's all the snow plowing is. If I lived in like Northern Maine or Minnesota or something like that, yes, a whole different operation. You know, we would have a completely different setup of equipment. We'd be working a lot more, you know, stuff would be getting a lot more use. It'd make more sense. But honestly, around here, the amount of money we make at snow plowing, even on a good winter, it's just, it's still sometimes, you know, is it even worth it? The amount of money we pay for insurance, equipment upkeep, you know, all that stuff. So. I don't know. It's one of those things. I'm on a little rant right now, but it's uh, one of those things where there's a lot of haters when it comes to anything you do. No matter what, if you do it right, you're still going to get someone to say you're doing it wrong. But at the end of the day, we're here just to make a few extra bucks in the winter. That's what the snow plowing stuff is. It's great content for us. That's where the channel is really blown up. But at the end of the day, we're just a seasonal business trying to make it through. And we use snow plowing to supplement you know, our loss of income. You know, obviously not being able to work on pools all winter. So... Enough with that rant, but if you guys do want to hear more about, you know, my philosophy and stuff with snow plowing, I wouldn't mind making videos on it, you know, because for, for a lot of people, it makes no sense. A lot of people think I'm stupid, you know, think we should be doing seasonal contracts, think we should have, you know, <laughs> a front end loader, think we should have, you know, a 10 foot V plow on that dump truck over there, whatever. For my operation, it makes sense. Everything's a close knit within a mile of each other. We can bang our route out in like two or three hours and if you break down the hourly profit we are well over 500 dollars an hour profit so you can't hate on that <laughs> so and I, I don't mind talking numbers one of these days if people really want to see it i have no problem breaking down how much we charge how we price things and how much money we make because at the end of the day snow plowing for us is extremely profitable and a lot of the reason why it is is because of the way we have it set up it's all basic equipment paid off equipment in the way we structure our route uh it's we, we try to work with the same customers and we try to keep a very close route um keep it small small operation this year with me david and a shoveler you know we don't have a ton of guys on payroll keep the overhead low and do it that way that's just how i do it and it works for us it's extremely profitable you may not make you know hundreds of thousands of dollars a winter but the money we do make the profit margin is probably at least 75%, if not more. So, um, but anyways, enough ranting. <laughs> I love talking about the snow stuff, though, because there's so many haters. Uh, and it's with everything you do. 
you know, if you don't have the fancy new crap, I hate seeing these these young kids on TikTok nowadays or Instagram, you know, flaunting brand new crap, you know, tilt rotators on there, excavators or, you know, blacked out, you know, tinted window trucks. You don't need that crap to make money, you know, you really don't. Um, I, I did, I've done it without it, you know, I've done it with basic stuff, you know, and yeah, that's another rant for another day. So I'm going to stop. <laughs> I could talk about business and, you know, this stuff all day, every day. Um, very passionate about it. Obviously, I've done this all out of my own pockets, on my own, you know, with very minimal help. And I've gotten gotten this far. You know, we're not, we're not a huge multi-million dollar operation by any means. But I'm trying my best to run a lean, profitable business. And I think I've done a pretty damn good job at it when 90% of the equipment you see is just about paid off. Uh, my goal by the end of the year, it may happen, it may not happen, but I am very close within a year maybe of having a 100%, I mean, there's always going to be debt, don't get me wrong, but a 100% debt-free company to a point. <laughs> there's a little, you know, I, I, I'm going to obviously have debt, you know, there's going to be credit cards that you're going to have to put stuff on, payments, whatever, but for the most part, you know, I have a few more little payments to make on a couple of these vehicles, that skid steer is almost paid off, and then just about everything is going to be 100% paid off that you see here. So, um, we'll see, unless we buy more, more stuff. <laughs> but my goal is to try to have minimal debt. That's, that's the goal. And uh, I've been trying to do that my best. I don't have any, I, I literally don't have a small business loan. I've never done this with a small business loan. I've done everything out of my pocket with a credit card. Um, and the credit card doesn't have, you know, a $100,000 limit on it. <laughs> so, you know, we buy supplies, we do the jobs, we pay them right down. Payroll, right out of right out of pocket, you know, nothing finance. So, but, all right, I'm ranting at this point. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. I've been all fired up, so. Whole video is about snow plowing stuff. But anyways, we're wrapping up winter. It's done. Um, I'm going to go shut that uh, spreader up, and then uh, we're going to get a cover for it. Eventually, we'll get the plows put away. That'll be on another video, and then we are 100% done with winter, so. But that's going to be it for this one. I uh, just wanted to wrap up winter real quick. Um, I mean, we could have wrapped this up two and a half months ago. But <laughs> to put a close to the season, this is the video. So <laughs> appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, um, subscribe. And uh, I'm trying my best to get these videos out. We are getting busy, so there may be a delay you know, here and there. I'm going to do my best to keep getting them out. Uh, anything you guys want to see on the channel, want me to talk about, show, explain more, uh, leave comments, uh, message me on Instagram, anything like that. I'm happy to try to put the content out there, uh, whether it's pool related, business related, snow plant related, whatever. So, uh, whatever we can do uh, to, to get you guys to uh, enjoy the videos. So, I'm going to wrap this one up and we'll see you on the next one.